President, this vote isn't about making a statement on LGBTQ. Is it, it isn't making a statement on, of anything other than concern for a child. A child that is struggling with gender, gender identification issues. Could be a young lady that a pediatrician told me about a few days ago that made the statement that she had her first period, she was going to commit suicide. We know that most kids that are struggling with gender dysphoria decide to stay the gender that they are. It, it's a phase that they go through. Some it's not. What would it hurt to allow doctors to have access to these puberty blockers to give these kids time to work through the, the, the issues that they face? Why can't we trust our doctors as we do for every other issue to guide us through these things and, and to make the decision on what dosage and how long? These are medications that are commonly used every day for kids that are maturing too quickly, a nine-year-old that begins puberty, doctors slow down that puberty until the child gets older. It's safe medication. So this bill does not allow that, but what it does allow is mental health treatment with no constraints. The previous version put constraints stating that a mental health professional could not promote transition during their sessions. This bill does not restrict that. I thought that was important to us. Does that not create more of a risk for that child in the long run than the, the puberty blockers? I think it does. I think we've made a mistake here. I, this bill is better than what 470 was originally, no doubt about it. There are provisions of 150 that I agree with. You've got one side pushing really hard which is making the other side push back even harder. And we've forgotten what's important in this. It's the people. The people are important in this. My concern is for the children. Mr. President, can I say that, that if we allowed the, the blockers to be prescribed and utilized, would it save hundreds, thousands of lives? I can't say that. But you know what? If it saves one kid, one, what does it hurt? I don't understand, Mr. President. I do understand the other issues, and I do understand that we want to protect our values, we want to protect our kids. I support that. When are we going to get past all of this extremism, all the radicalism on one side, on the other side? When are we going to sit down and talk about the people involved in this? It's a difficult situation. It's going to be fought for years. We've got to come together at some point and stop this craziness and start talking. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Chambers Armstrong. Senator from Jefferson 19, please cast your vote. Then explain. Uh, I vote no and seek permission to explain. Please proceed. Three minutes. I stand today to speak against a bill that is hateful that is discriminatory, and that is beneath the dignity of this chamber and this commonwealth. The proponents of this bill claim that it is about protecting children, that it comes from a place of love and desire to help them. Let me be clear, this bill will kill Kentucky kids. And if the people that vote in favor of this bill do not know this, it is only because they do not want to know this. The data is cl clear. The data is consistent. The Journal of the American Medical Association that is cited in this chamber numerous times for numerous other issues as the leading authority has put out studies of tens of thousands of children that show that allowing children access to this care, which you are about to vote to ban, decreases suicidality, decreases depression, and keeps kids alive. So no, Mr. President, this bill is not 
about protecting kids. It is about silencing kids. It is about bullying kids. And it is about eliminating children that you do not understand. These children are watching today. They will watch this on the news. They will watch the words you say on the news. The nation is watching Kentucky today. And they will remember, they will remember what this vote says about our commonwealth, our economy will suffer, our businesses will suffer, and most importantly, our families and our most vulnerable children will suffer. If the majority party in this state wants to protect Kentucky kids, what have you done about the 250 kids living in poverty in this state? About the 8,500 kids in foster care on any given day? About the 6,748 children who were reported abused in 2020? Where are the hours of deliberation on that, Mr. President? Those are the things you should do to help children. Do not keep doing these things that target 1% of kids. Do not assume that you, the members of the General Assembly, know better than the doctors in your district that will get sued as a result of this law that you're passing, that you know better what is medically necessary for kids. Do not assume that you know better than parents what is in the best interest of children. To all of the trans kids who are watching, I am so sorry that this is happening to you. I believe, because I have to, that this is a dark moment in Kentucky's history and that things will get better and history will judge the people that vote in favor of this law today. I hope that you will lead the way to a better future. Do not let this make you give up. Keep fighting. I will be there fighting with you. I vote no. Senator Deneen. Senator Douglas. Aye. Senator Funky Frohmeyer. Senator Girdler, Aye. Senator Gibbons, Aye. Senator Harper Angel. Senator from Jefferson 35, please cast your vote, then explain. I vote no, Mr. President. It's another sad day in Kentucky, and the message that we're sending our youth today is that if you don't look like me, think like me, and act like me, we will make you conform because we can. Because we can, but we shouldn't. Thank you, Mr. President. I vote no. Senator Higdon. Senator Howell. Aye. Senator Mays Bledsoe. Aye. Senator McDaniel. Aye. Senator Meredith. Senator from Grayson, please cast your vote, then explain limited to three minutes. Thank you, Mr. President. I vote aye. I wasn't even going to speak on this bill, but after being yelled at uh, incessantly, over this bill, feel compelled to respond. I find it so hypocritical that people are condemning us for this legislation, but can turn the blind eye to 50 years of Roe versus Wade that killed 63 million innocent babies. So don't lecture me about caring for children when you will openly support the murder of innocent children. It's inexcusable, it's sickening, and hypocritical. Yes, Senator Mills. Aye. Senator Neal. Senator from Jefferson, 33, please cast your vote, then explain. I vote no. Please continue. Limited three minutes. It won't take that long. Yes, sir. You know, I've been here for a while. And I've seen us do some great things. In fact, even this session, we've done some great things. But I always get confused when I see those with power exercising that power unnecessarily, irrationally, over those that do not have that kind of power. I've often said that just because you have power doesn't mean you exercise it. Is it wise to exercise it? If you go across this country right now and see what we're doing here, you'll find that this is not something that just came out of this body. This is an initiative that is being taken place all across this country. It's not right. You know it's not right. 
So we can talk about all the other issues, and we can talk about being hypocritical, we can talk about all kinds of things. We're not perfect. But I have to think that everyone in this body is intelligent enough, that is sensitive enough, that is thoughtful enough, that they would not take unnecessarily their power and crush to the earth those who are already in great need. I was going to stand up and say things like, this is shameful. Uh, I cannot tell you the rage I have in my body. I don't express it that way much. But I got to tell you, this is a low point. We can do better than this. This body can do better than this. No. Senator Namus. Senator Rocky Adams. Senator Schickel. Senator Smith. Senator Southworth. Senator from Anderson, please cast your vote, then explain limited to three minutes. Cast an I vote and explain, Mr. President. Please proceed. Mr. President, I um, prepared for this day because I was looking toward the time when this would be happening, and here we are. So I had the opportunity uh, the last term in school to take a class specifically on this issue. It was entitled LGBTQ Health Law. Now our professor has been multi-decades, long time crusader, one of the best litigators in the country on this issue. And I really enjoyed the class and learning everything that he taught us. The first thing he made clear was it's turned into an alphabet soup. Everyone starts adding letters, and so it goes after Q, they start adding I, then A, and now there's a plus sign after that. I'm not sure what other letters, but anyway, he told us we have to be careful because the I and the A don't actually really go with the others. So if anybody's not sure, the I stands for intersex, and there's actually a piece of this in what the House concurred with or brought over for us, which is why I bring this up. Because this really spoke to me in the class when we were talking about what is intersex? It is children who have actual physical, you know, born, something's wrong, chromosomes off. I mean, there's birth defects of all sorts out there, right? So anyway, that's what it is. And so I'm going to read from the materials that I learned, and this just really made a lot of sense to me. It said, intersex people in the United States are subjected to medical practices that can inflict irreversible physical and psychological harm on them, starting in infancy, harms that can last throughout their lives. Many of these procedures are done with the stated aim of making it easier for children to grow up quote-unquote normal and integrate more easily into society by helping them conform to a particular sex assignment. The results are often catastrophic. The supposed benefits are largely unproven and there are generally no urgent health considerations at stake. Procedures that could be delayed until intersex children are old enough to decide whether they want them are instead performed on infants who then have to live with the consequences for a lifetime. Mr. President, the whole point of this whole module in our class was about parents choosing something for their children or children making decisions before they have consent of a majority age and how dangerous that can be because children don't know or parents may do something that really is not the right decision. And that is why I support making this all held off until they are 18 because the people who have done these decisions know that it is a multi-year planning process just to even get started, and that's why we should not have our children involved. Thank you. Senator Stivers. Aye. Senator Storm. Aye. Senator Thayer. Aye. Senator Thomas. Senator from Fayette 13, please cast your vote, then explain, limited to three minutes. I'm going to tell you what all families have in common. Cast your vote, please. I cast a nay vote, Mr. President. Black families and white families, Christian families and Jewish families, English-speaking families and non-English-speaking families. Every family has someone gay in their family. Every family. Could be our favorite aunt and uncle. Could be our brother or sister. Could even be our child. And you know what? We love that family member. We come together and eat dinner with them, and we socialize with them, and they are us. 
except for today when this legislature says that we want to demonize those family members. We want to exercise them out of our existence. And you know what? This legislature really wants to stick it to them because we haven't done it just once this session. We've done it twice. We've brought back things that we've already decided upon. Like the bullying and harassment that these students get, the pronouns. We we say it again, that teachers and administrators can use whatever pronoun they want. And we're taking away your right as a parent to intercede because it doesn't matter whether you as a parent want to affirm your child's existence. The teachers, and, the teachers and, and principals can still do it. And we say that. Not only do we bring back the bullying, but we're going to now check the bathrooms. We're going to, under this legislation, establish the bathroom police. And we're going to go in those bathrooms and see what's happening in your, in your children's bathrooms. We're going to do that today. But we're going to even do more. We don't care what age your child is. We've just joined the don't say gay state. We've just joined that. So, so issues like sexual identity or, 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 or sexual gender, we're not even going to talk about that anymore. Everything you've heard say today is true. We are tearing ourselves apart. And we, we better get this together. Otherwise, we're going to find ourselves literally destroying each other. Mr. President, I proudly vote no. Senator Tishner. Senator from Oldham, please cast your vote. Then explain, limited to three minutes. Mr. President, I cast an I vote. There's two issues in this bill. You have parental rights, and then you have an, an issue of protecting children from potentially going down a course to destroy their lives and never be able to get it back. And some think that's a parental right, that you should be able to make that decision. I strongly disagree with that. I've looked at the evidence, I've looked at the studies, and I'm following it closely in Europe in particular. There are a plethora of nations who have been on this path for much longer than we have, many more years than we have, and they do have long-term studies, and they are now shutting it all down. Children reach an age, about 20, I guess they're adults then, 21 to 25, depending if they're male or female, when their frontal lobe finally develops. If we get them on a course of puberty blockers and we stop the natural progression of what their body is supposed to do, what it's made to do to continue to develop, and they go towards a path and they know that if they start that progression, it's, it's a very high percentage that will keep moving towards surgery and towards that next step of transition. When that brain develops, they can't go back. They've cut that part off, it's gone. We're not talking about a minor thing. For goodness sakes, 18 year olds have to, you have to be 18 to get a tattoo. We're talking about removing healthy body parts that you cannot put back on. I've seen the pictures. It's horrifying. I've talked to detransitioners and the way they are treated is horrifying if they speak out. And most of them are young. They're in their early 20s and they realize they shouldn't have done what they did. One story was so heartbreaking. A young girl went to a clinic, and this was from a whistleblower who worked at the clinic, and she started to realize something wasn't right with what they were doing. She had her breasts removed. She was 15 years old. A few months later, she called back and said, I want my breasts back. What can I do? How can I get them back? The step that she had taken that she was led down now created an irreversible path for her life. I know I'm coming to the end, and I will say this. We're being accused of being hated, hateful in this bill. And as Christians, we're told to speak the truth in love, and I would argue that the truth itself is love. And for those who are 
opposed to this measure, those who think we're going on the attack. I've spoken with some, Emma, who's been here every day this session, and had a great conversation with her. And I will tell you, you guys were created with a purpose, and I will tell you, God does not make mistakes. Thank you. Senator Turner. Senator Webb. Senator West. Senator Westerfield. Senator from Christian, please cast your vote, then explain. I vote aye, Mr. President, but I, but I do so a bit reluctantly. Uh, I want to commend the Senator from Marshall for his hard work and his dedication. In the last 24 hours, uh, my Christian values have been called into question. Uh, I know his have been as well. Um, everybody else that voted on last night's amended version of 470 and voted in, in support of Floor Amendment 2 was uh, blasted with hundreds of emails today. Um, and I shared with my wife my concern, which is very much like the Senator from Marshall. And the verses that keep coming back are about love. Love your neighbors yourself. Love one another. People will know you by the love that you have and that you share with the world. I'm not crazy about this bill. I worry about the harm it might cause. It is better than House Bill 470 as we had it in committee a few days ago. It makes improvements for what doctors are able to do, what they can say, answer questions, talk, which I didn't think they would be free to do without liability underneath 470 as we had it last night before it was amended. I, I don't agree with transition. I don't understand it. Uh, but doctors should be able to answer questions about it, and I'm glad now that they can uh, and do so without fear of liability. And so while I, I appreciate the Senator from Marshall's work, and I certainly uh, take to heart the, the words that have been shared on the floor tonight, uh, I think uh, the folks that support this and the folks that don't support it all, all of us on this, in this body and the body down the hall, genuinely care about the children of the state of Kentucky. We disagree profoundly about this issue, some of us, uh, but I hope that we can appreciate the spirit with which we try to do our work. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Wheeler. Aye. Senator Williams. Senator from Boone, 20, please cast your vote, then explain. Mr. President, I'd like to explain my I vote. Please proceed. Uh, I appreciate the uh, Senator from Jefferson 19's passion, the Senator from uh, Grayson's passion in their speak. I, I think probably I spoke 30 years ago when I first came about the same passion about abortion she felt. But in, in that 30 years, I've learned to know this body. And I don't think there is one person in this body that is motivated out of hate. I think everyone in this body is motivated out of love and concern and care for their constituents and the children and the parents in Kentucky. And uh, I really appreciate, although I don't agree with the Senator from Jefferson 33's comments in totality, I really appreciate his tone and his demeanor in giving it. We've been friends for years. We've disagreed on many, many things, but we've all, all been able to look at one another to laugh about some things and find common ground on many other areas. I am looking forward to finding the common ground on this. But the reason I'm voting yes on this is um, we have an increasing suicide rate. This bill has not been responsible for the rising suicide rate. It hasn't been in effect. What has been in effect is a rising industry that is now a multi-billion dollar industry that is performing what I would say unspeakable things on children. And I'm going to speak to the children that we care. Each one of us has 30, 40 trillion cells. And I don't, every now and then, you need a drug, you need some surgery to help your body along to encourage those cells that are injured, they're damaged. But 
if you start fighting those 30 or 40 trillion cells with a lifetime of drugs, with surgery, you're not going to win. The 30, 40, be yourself. Be what your 30 or 40 trillion cells say that you are. That is who you are. And don't let anybody else tell you that you're any different from what your body is telling you you are. And so I would encourage you, listen to your body, listen to those cells in your body, and align your mind and intellect. You are a unique individual. You're different from every other human being there is. But your cells know what you are. And so I hope that we get to the point where we can all respect our differences, we can disagree, and realize that we are, each and every one of us, trying to help the children, the parents, the citizens of this Kentucky. That's why I vote aye. Senator Wilson. Aye. Senator Wise. Aye. Senator Yates. Senator from Jefferson 37, please cast your vote, then explain. Mr. President, I vote no. <laughs> One of the benefits of being Yates is I get to wait to the very end. And uh, so I know sometimes I can jump up and be fiery sometimes, but I sit by it and, and what I did, honestly, what I was gonna say is probably changed several times by listening. And I will disagree that I don't believe that this all comes from a place of love. Um, I think that there has been a huge rise of anti-trans bills and hate politics, and it's because it sells like hotcakes. And what upsets me is there has been surveys that put out in, in certain primaries, I guess that's an issue that wins. And that bothers me, because we know without a doubt what we are doing here today is going to hurt children. And we protect ourselves by making up stuff. Right? We do those like straw man fake arguments, hearing stories about children having their body parts cut off before this, and this is why we have to do this. But our experts, our doctors, all the literature that we read, not the stuff that this, our lawyers and Indian chiefs and all the other professions we have in here, we decide we think is right, the stuff that the medical doctors told us. Because you can't have the surgery before you're 18 in Kentucky. I don't think anywhere, but not here. We're, we're making up things in horrific stories to somehow justify what we're doing so we can stand behind the hate politics because the surveys say it sells like hotcakes. But I'll tell you what, when you look up at that board and you casted your vote, you have to remember that. When you go home to your family, your friends, that one person that you love that may be a little bit different, that may be gay, may be trans, it may be questioned, or may have a son or daughter or that is, this is the one you remember. My grandfather served 22 years in the House of Representatives and he told me, David, there's a few votes that I remember and I'll always remember. And those are the ones I didn't vote my integrity. So I hope that those of you, because I know there's people on here, good people that are really having trouble with this. I hope that you remember this in the next year, the next session, we work to educate ourselves and we come back and do something better and to those that are home who are hurting, who are denied the, the basic mental health treatment, I mean the most basic things that we would think that would be kind for our children. We let them know that we're fighting for you. Remember I had my beautiful daughter here yesterday. She was here with her friend and she was in and out of the caucus things and they're picking up the literature and they're looking at it. And she just looks at me and says, Daddy, why? Why? The truth is, I don't have an answer. Any other members seeking recognition? Senator from Carter, cast your vote. I'm going to vote aye today, reluctantly. My position is somewhere between the gentleman from McCracken and Senator from Christian. After hearing the evidence in on the original bill, which was, nobody could, I couldn't sit through that hearing without tears in my eyes the whole time. That's how I felt about that bill. I'm not a doctor. We should not interject ourselves into the KMA guidelines and standards of care. That is not our purview. 
this bill is better and actually has some things that I can live with or agree to or maybe even hope goes to court. So let's put it out there. But I have a great deal of respect for the chairman who sat and listened to the testimony, unlike many of the folks in this room, and deferred to the testimony and looked in the eyes of the individuals that were testifying and the people in the audience and truly came with an option that was realistic and rational. And he, I appreciate that, and everybody should appreciate that. I don't like that process in this. What are we afraid of with a process like getting this bill? Really? Table in one bill, and then here it comes today. I don't know about you all, I've had bills going through and things happening. I really hadn't had time to sit down and digest this or even discuss it. What are we afraid of in civil discourse and relying on experts and stakeholder testimony? This is not the process that we, we can do better. Somebody said that earlier. And again, juvenile justice, let's, let's think about that as we continue to go into the next session with the task force for every juvenile in Kentucky. And parental choice, let's be consistent in that as we move forward. And not just pick and choose what we want. Thank you. Seeing no other person seeking recognition, there being 30 yeas, 7 nays, Senate Bill 150 as amended and concurred with by House Committee Substitute is finally passed. <laughs> Mr. Doorkeeper, if you would please have the individuals. Senator Scott, action on title amendment. Thank you, Mr. President. Please ask the clerk to report House Committee Title Amendment 1 to House Committee Sub 1 to Senate Bill 150. Mr. Clerk, please report. House Committee Title Amendment 1 to House Committee Sub 1 to Senate Bill 150. Senator Scott. Move that we concur. Madam for the Botter is concurrence on House Committee Title Amendment number 1. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. House Committee Title Amendment number 1 is concurred with. Senator from Scott. Thank you, Mr. President. Now let's go back to the regular orders. Prior to doing that, Senator Scott, I'm going to recognize the Senator from Grayson. Thank you, Mr. President. The Clerk of the House is here to...